Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, it's that time of year. It's the most wonderful time of year. In my opinion, yes. I, I totally agree. And yeah. so I am really happy that we're going to do another list. What is the name of this list? Well, this is going to be our top five whiskeys. I say whiskeys because I've got one that's not a mm, bourbon. I don't okay. know about you. Yeah, I did bourbons, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, for fall. So we live in Minnesota, so we have all four seasons. Fall time in Minnesota is the best. It's it is. amazing. It's really nice time. And uh, yeah, it's just my favorite season. I hate the fact that it precedes winter, <laughs> but I love the fall. And then with fall, it's just like a vibe. You know what I mean? There's there like this, everything changes. It's like, you know, it gets darker earlier. You're starting to get that cool, crisp air. The leaves are changing. Yep. Bonfires, but burning also, leaves. The type of food you eat changes. Yeah. And it's there's like some a really good thing. foods. So certain flavors mm -hmm. and that, that kind of informs what bourbons I picked based on kind of where sure. the food is. Yeah. So, and I know a lot of people do their lists of their bourbons or whiskeys for fall. So this is ours. So do you want to get started? You want to go first? I can go first. All right. Um, not really in any particular order. Greg can see my list because they're over here, but I can't see Greg's and I don't know what's on it. Right. So, um, Sorry. I'm starting with uh, an oldie. Kind of a standard here. Let's move but, that to right there. But I feel like Buffalo Trace sometimes gets a little bit skipped because mm -hmm. of the whole Buffalo Trace is Buffalo Trace and like it gets criticized and sometimes justifiably, but the reality is it's just a good bourbon. Yeah. And what you're gonna find my theme with my picks are, they're just bourbons I like. And sometimes you have bourbon sitting on your wall that- So not so much a fall bourbon, just no, a bourbon that you well, like. <laughs> well, no, but bourbons that you actually wanna drink. And don't be, don't let it sit on the shelf and drink a daily drinker. Mm -hmm. When you have this great bourbon that you want to drink, drink the one you want to drink. Right. You know. It's... But do you particularly think that there are flavors in here that uh, kind of have I the fall I genuinely vibe. like Buffalo Trace. Right. Yeah. And it, it's a little bit of a nice, rich kind of flavor profile that I just love. And you think it goes good with like fall weather, Definitely. fall yep. food, and, food. and stuff yeah, like that? Totally. Okay. So my first pick, let's go with this one right here. Bam. Four rows of single barrel. So 100 proof, so it's at that proof point where it's starting to get to, you know, Solid. warm you up a little bit. Yep. Uh, high rye bourbon. It has some of those nice, like, clove and uh, kind of some baking spices yep. to it. And that just, you know, that's going to that's gonna remind you of fall all day long. And it's great. The other thing with my list is I kind of try to stick with stuff that's readily available, common whiskeys for the most part. That you did not? I did not go down that road. <laughs> Bring on the George T. Stag. No, well, it's uh, amazing that you would assume that. Um, but that's kind of the point, you know, pick the pick the good bourbon or, you know, that you have or whatever whiskey and, and drink that. Okay. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Well, I'm going for like, this is just particularly fall flavor whiskeys. Yeah, that's great. So, all right, what do you got next? All right, next. Uh, well, we got to knock this one out because it is very cinnamon forward. And I was going to put this on yeah. my list and I knew you were going to have of this. Of course. And this bottle's almost gone, but um, very cinnamon forward. Um, Can I pour out of yeah, this Yeah, you may. Because I was going to pour myself a yeah, bourbon I and I have not had Old Tub in quite a while. Yeah. Um, just and a I don't really feel... interesting. It's a bottle and bond, 100 proofer. Um, and I'm going to have a little bit too. Um, <coughs> I don't feel bad killing your bottle here because it's yeah, not like it's not, expensive or rare. Exactly. $21 typically and should be available just about everywhere. Not quite everywhere, but a lot. Yeah. Um, some people don't love it. It's not the most amazing thing ever, but it works really well for me. I think we said it, we did a review of this. This was actually one of our first ever reviews. Yeah. Um, it, it was very divisive with people. People either loved it or hated it. I loved it. I think some people really don't like cinnamon. Cinnamon and That's corn a, forward. Yep. So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna do a sample of every bottle that we pick. You know, we'd be here for two hours, but. That is just, it's that dry corn, cornmeal sort of thing with cinnamon on top so of it. So dry. A little bit of vanilla. But then a, a nice vanilla note. Yeah, it is really, really interesting. I mean, I get, I can see why this isn't everybody's jam. 
it, it but is. But there's something I find very, very. It is very Jim Beam. Yeah. You know, obviously it is from Jim Beam. But I mean, like Old Grandad is slightly different, mm -hmm. you know, and Knob Creek is slightly different, but it definitely comes across as a, a Beam product. And that's a good thing. It's, it's definitely different though. It's got its own. Yep. Yep. Every now and again, we do get that weird note, mm -hmm. the Play-Doh note that shows up on Old Tub. Not always there, but sometimes. But there's something about that I really like. Okay. And he's referring to Plato the Philosopher when he says yeah. that. <laughs> yes. Next on the list, bam, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. There's not a list in the world that that doesn't belong to be on. Unless it? it's bourbons that aren't amazing. Well, yeah, I guess. This would not belong on that list. You know, we just did a review that we could have called that. But we called it, what did we say? <laughs> disappointing. Bourbons, disappointed yeah. bourbons. Well, there were some amazing, like, well, yeah. well, well that's a different list. Check out that video. Yeah. Um, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, obviously you just cannot go wrong with this. It's fantastic. This batch happens to be, this is, so this is their barrel proof product if, if you're not familiar, 116.8 proof. It's got all the wild turkey goodness. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. got that nice spice that wild turkey has with it. It's got those dark kind of rich sweet flavors. Like I find their caramels and their sweetness and their brown sugars have like a dark tone to them. Mm -hmm. It's got some cinnamon on top of it. You get the, the good barrel notes out of this. Drinks mature. Drinks it's mature. super old. It's less than 10 years, but it definitely drinks mature. Yep. And then for the, but the, even 101 is like a mix of like six to eight year stuff. Right. So I'm assuming same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the 116 proof is just going to warm you right up. So. And mostly available mm -hmm. at a lot of liquor stores and prices like what, 55? getting there i'm actually seeing this for a little bit more at some places now and it used to be 42 and then it was like 48 now it's in the 50s you can still get this for 48 bucks some okay. places so but yeah it's it's getting a little overpriced probably because whiskey tube channels keep talking about how wonderful it is yeah we shoot ourselves in the foot yeah again talk about the rad raspberry vodka yeah for sure all right what's all up right, next next um there's no really good reason for picking this other than it is just a great bourbon. I like it. Like you're like this one's fall because it's cinnamon. The other two, I just like drinking them. So I, yeah, I, I'll drink them in the fall. I'll, I'll drink them in the fall. I'll drink them in the rain. I'll drink them. It's like a green eggs and ham. <laughs> exactly. Thing. I was just about to go that far. So Greg's going with bourbons. He'll drink anytime, and I'll drink these anytime. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is Evan Williams, single barrel, mm -hmm. eighty-six point six proof. It is disappearing. That is. Kind of a, it's going to be distillery only, right? Is it, or yes. maybe it already has. Um, but they tend to be fairly old. Like this one was um, barreled on October 29th, 2012, and then bottled on July of 2020. So it was almost eight years old and like 20 bucks for an eight year amazing single barrel. And why is this a fall bourbon for you? Like what are the why? fall vibes? Um, well, definitely the clove and the, um, it's sweet. But it's sweet, leaning toward baked goods. And it's got the oakiness to it, too. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a good one to kill around the campfire. Yeah, exactly. Like when you have that, that fall night fire. Um, okay, so for my next one, I'm going to go a little different here. This is a whiskey, not a bourbon, but it is, bam, Nassif Family Reserve. So this is a cat's eye distillery product. Can't remember what the exact mix is, but it's a blend of like... They take an unaged rye distillate, I believe, with an aged bourbon, and a blend light them, is that a light age whiskey? that, and then oh. take that blend and mix it with a light whiskey. Gotcha. If I remember correctly, we've done a review of this. Both really liked it. It's, it's awesome. 107 proof. Mm -hmm. So it's a higher proof. Give you that nice warm hug. Yep. But this one is just, A, it's really interesting. It's a, it's a very unique blend, and we've liked everything from Cat's Eye. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, but it's, it's, it's rye forward, but it still has the sweetness, you know, kind of wrapped around that rye spice. Yep. And so there's something, I didn't put an actual rye on my list and I was going to, it was kind of hard to dwindle this down to five. Yeah. Cause there were five more that I could think of that'd be great on a crisp, cool fall night. Um, but just having like that rye forwardness, but still having the sweetness and then the, the extra proof. Mm -hmm. Great choice for fall. So from what I understand, this is, I see this a lot on Instagram, whiskey tube stuff. So I think it's a it's pretty readily available for most people, at least from what I understand. So if you've not had this, this is like 40 bucks a bottle. Awesome. And this is a great, really interesting whiskey to 
bust out with your whiskey nerd friends. Totally. All right, what's next on bourbons that you just really like to drink bourbons all the time? Bourbons that I just wanted to include on my list. Oh, I was waiting for this one. This is- uh, I probably should have poured this instead of the old tub. Well, <laughs> I'd have to do math. 127.9 is the proof point on this, which we've now uh, bumped it up a bit. This is Booker's. This is one of their small batch exclusives. Oh. This one I'm totally with you on the fall vibes. Yeah, definitely very nutty. Very baked goods, almost like cookie notes, almost like oatmeal. Did we review this one? I thought we did. Have we done two Booker's reviews? Although I just bought another bottle, so we're going to need to do another Oh, okay. One. So this is the one we reviewed. Yes. Because I know you remember we really liked that yeah. one. It was amazing. Yeah. Dark, rich flavors. Yep. Yeah, if I remember correctly. I mean, that's a... Yeah. And every time I revisit it, which is occasionally... I just, It's just one of those bourbons, like, I just... They're hard to find, but at least in Minnesota, we can see them occasionally. They're kind of expensive. They've, but... In this last year, they've really kind of gotten to be a little rare. Yeah. But yeah, great choice. Yep. Okay, for this pick, got BAM. I know I said mostly available. Um, this one is slightly allocated. This is uh, Henry McKenna 10 year bottled in bond. Um, this is getting more expensive. I've seen a few bottles of this lately, but they're selling it for 70 bucks, which sucks. But um, this one I picked just because this is a very, this has got like nice dark flavors to mm -hmm. me. Um, kind of borders in that molassesy sort of area. Every time I have a pour of this, I'm just like, oh, yeah. Really intense flavors. I get why people like this so much. Yep. Um, and so it's at 100 proofs, it's bottled and bond, 10 years old. So you get the nice barrel notes, you get the nice dark kind of rich flavors out of it. Yep. And it just seemed like one of those ones that just, again, around the you know the fire, that fall fire where it's cold out, so you're staying close to the fire and you maybe sit with a blanket or something like that. We do that a lot in Minnesota. It's kind of well, a thing. Well, not we, I mean, we the general. Greg and I <laughs> sit under a blanket together and just really enjoy the- uh, That's not true. The fire, so yeah. Great choice. Unfortunately, it's starting to get a little overpriced, but some places still sell this for a normal price. Yep. It seems like this one just kind of shows up in waves. Definitely. Like it won't be around for a while, and then all of a sudden it's there. Yep. You know, so. All right, what do you got next? All right, next. Um, you know, I don't even know if I So could... this is your final pick. This is my final pick. I don't even have a really good justification for why it's a fall bourbon, mm. um, but the colors kind of match fall colors. Um, this is Weller Antique 107. <laughs> so good it's just a great bourbon um it, to be honest i don't love the weller line all of the others they're they're good they're fine mm -hmm. but this one's actually freaking amazing that's one that you and i agree on allocated nonsense aside whatever yeah. if that was just your bottom shelf i mean mid, that, mid shelf i mean it, mid shelf it, but it, 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 it used to be price. you know it's got the screw top yep it's, it wasn't meant to be a fancy bourbon, it doesn't seem. And I think it's excellent. That's one of my, out of all the allocated stuff I've tried, that's probably one that, I, I mean, it's not like a George T. Stagg, obviously, or something like that, but yep. um, yeah, Weller 107 is just, I love it. Totally And agree. I actually was thinking about putting that on my list too. Oh, wow. Because it does kind of have like that cherry red fruit sort of note. Yep. And sometimes you get into that at the end of fall or whatever, you get, you know. Yep. And yeah, that's just... It's so good. That's, if there was one bourbon that I wish was not allocated, that's the one that I wish I could just buy at any time. I totally agree. All right, so for my last bottle, I don't actually have a bottle of it, but I obviously need to get one because it's September now. And they're easy to find. For fall bourbons. So I'm gonna either put it right here, boom, depending on the frame, or right here, boom. So we'll see which one. But it's Old Granddad 114. 114. So Old Grandad, also a Jim Beam product, just like Old Tub. Mm -hmm. Also very corn and cinnamon forward. Even more cinnamon forward. Yeah. So take that as a warning if you're anti-cinnamon. Yep. And it's a high rye bourbon. So you've got the, uh, you got some of those clove and baking spites, allspice, yep. stuff like that. It's got the nice clove notes. Um, and it's just, it's 114 proof and it's like sub $30. Yeah, right. It's it's one of the best sub $30 bottles you can buy. Totally agree. Um, but you have to be into the flavor profile. I will say that. Yes. I happen to be into that flavor profile. <laughs> but that one, and even like Old Grandad Bonded mm -hmm. was another one I, I struggled with not having on this list, but Old Grandad 114 or Old Grandad Bonded, just perfect fall bourbons. 
Yep. So check those out because the old granddad bonded. If that you don't want awesome. the 114 proof, you know, obviously bottled and bond, so it's 100 proof. And it's just, yeah, it's cinnamon forward. It's a fantastic fall bourbon. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, now I want to drink all of these because there's not a bad bourbon. There really isn't. This is represented like here. Amazing collection yeah. of bourbon. So, well, this is what we're going to be sipping on in the fall. This and everything else. <laughs> on this shelf and Greg's shelf. We don't just limit ourselves to fall bourbons in the fall because really bourbon itself or rye themselves are kind of a fall forward drink. So you know, what you're saying that, is we need to step up our game. Like this is, you know, we just been, you know, called 20 to the, the floor. Like it's time to like. <laughs> and do like a bigger <laughs> list of fall bourbons no, or just start no, drinking like show more? up and yeah, we got to do more videos. We got to do more reviews. We need to be drinking more, do more reviews. Well, we're doing three a week. So, well, I mean, that seems like enough. <laughs> it does seem like enough. <laughs> so, but anyway, these have been our fall bourbons. Let us know in the comments what yours are. Totally. Um, and especially if you live in a fall climate. I know there's, you know, a lot of people that don't live in areas that have fall. Well, which everybody has fall, but well, like... Right, but they don't have the same yeah. kind of fall that we do here, you know? And if you have a YouTube channel, you know, yes. what's on your list? And maybe you'd include rye, or you'd include scotches, or you would include rum, or whatever. So, knock yourself out. Well, I'll tag some YouTube channels on like an Instagram post or something. We'll do the That's challenge. What are your fall bourbons? All right, well, this has been our list on the Bourbon Note. Happy fall, everybody. It's exciting. Football it is. season is starting. Just the whole nine yards. Anyway, this has been our video of our top five fall bourbons on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. Share this video with a friend or an enemy. Cheers. <laughs>